Welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor. And on behalf of everyone who is leading worship today, I welcome you. We are so excited that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time, we are particularly thrilled that you have chosen us. Thank you for being here. We want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. The link to that is is pinned in the comment section and then there's also a QR code on your screen. The contact form is a way that we'll be able to get in contact with you, put your name, your email address, all those things there so that we can get you information about Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, opportunities for small groups and service and connection. There's also a place on that contact form for you to put prayer requests that go to our pastors and prayer team. So we really encourage everyone to use that contact form today. Now, when we do gather for worship online, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That means that we covenant to participate that, well, we're going to participate in this time of worship because it's a time of worship. It's not just a random video that you are watching. It is worship of God and worship with one another. So when it's time to sing, we encourage you to sing. When it's time to pray, we encourage you to pray. Really focus in, turn off other distractions and other devices, maybe light a candle if that will help you focus, and just fully participate in what we're doing together today. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And and that means that the way that we are in the comment section together, the way we may be gathered with other people wherever it is that we're worshiping today, the way that we're sending all of this out into our community, into our world, we want all of it to be a blessing for everyone uh, who comes in contact with this, who participates in it. So please join with us in that covenant to participate and to be a blessing. Now today is our second week in our Good Enough worship series where we are exploring what it means really to be good enough in our faith and in our life and to trust in God with that. So we're glad you're here for this time. Welcome to worship. We continue our movement through the Lent season this week with another kind of letting go. This week we lament that so much in life is out of our control. This is frustrating to us. And so sometimes we have been tempted to believe the sayings that tell us if we think positively, we can turn it all around. Yet our experience tells us this doesn't always work. Let us turn ladder climbing toward the expectation of a perfect life into garden tending, nurturing what is, and embracing our holy, good enough lives. Spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays, mistakes we made. Sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us, and yet God is still here, and somehow this faith is good enough. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow? Void of sorrow, time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays. Mistakes we made, sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us and yet. God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough. Good 
Good morning, I'm Barb Eldridge. I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in Sefer Sunday School class, Tuesday morning Bible study, and Miriam Circle. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, our light and salvation, we call out to you, sometimes afraid of the adversaries in life. Shelters us in days of trouble. Lead us on level paths. Open us this day to your grace and peace. Transform our frustrations into simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. Please join us in singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I'm Allie Samaniego. I'm one of the handbell ringers, and I'm also on the trustee committee. We will hear in our reading from the Bible that even Jesus got super frustrated when folks didn't behave as he would have liked. While we probably aren't receiving death threats from King Herod, as Jesus was, still, our well-being could be threatened by the idea that if we just try hard enough, are nice enough, say just the right thing, life will always go our way. We run around in so many directions trying to herd the chicks into some imagined semblance of perfect formation. Have you ever tried to herd a chick? What if we could let go of needing all things and all people to be just so and instead learn to, li li learn to live into the unfolding of that which is not ours to control? Let us take a moment of silence, offering our reflections and confessions to God. Hear this compassionate word from the psalmist. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage wait for the Lord. Know that already God is offering us freedom from feeling alone in fixing what feels oh so wrong with this world, inviting us to let go of the need to be God so that we might recognize that God is with us, offering courage in difficulty. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven already, even now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. With this assurance of Jesus' love and forgiveness, let's share that love and peace with one another. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments. Share that with whomever you might be gathered with for this worship. And please, share that with me too. Peace be with you. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello. We are the Rao family. I am Ashley. I'm Barry. I'm Lucy. And this is Wendy. And Penny. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Rose Jarka Lazari. I'm the leader of the Spiritual Seeker Sunday School class and a devoted member of the UMW. Peace be with you. Hi, my name's Elizabeth Fry. I'm Jenny Fry. Peace, Peace be with, with you. you. Please join us in singing, You Are My King. All right, everybody, it is time for small talk. So I want to encourage all of the children to get in really close to your device and to your screen so you can see and hear absolutely everything that goes on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for small talk. Hello, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and Cohen. We're going to be cooking with Coco today. He's wearing his chef's hat. We've been looking forward to making Rice Krispie treats all week. So today is the day. It's the weekend. We're going to make these. We've got our Rice Krispies. We've got our, our bowl. We've got our butter. We are missing one thing. Um, Vlad, can you go to the pantry and get the marshmallows, please? This is all that's in there? This is it? This is it? There's no way we can make Rice Krispie treats with just this. I've been looking forward to these all week. I think one of the girls 
probably has been snacking on these at night. Or you, you. How are we gonna make Rice Krispie Treats without? My day's ruined. No Rice Krispie Treats. Oh, you have an idea? This should be good. My day's been ruined. Chocolate chips. Chocolate chips? This this doesn't make Rice Krispie Treats. This, this makes chocolate chip. Oh, it makes chocolate chip cookies. Oh. Well, I guess no Rice Krispie Treats, but chocolate chip cookies. That's good enough, don't you think? get ruined by things like not enough marshmallows or rain when we're planning to go somewhere and we think they've been ruined a lot but they really haven't been we can usually find something that would be good enough and save our day just like Laud saved the day with the chocolate chips so have exactly Luna so have a great day everybody and remember it doesn't have to be perfect but good enough. Bye everyone. Hi, my name is Curtis Down and I am the chair of the finance committee here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Our reading from the Bible today is Luke chapter 13 verses 31 through 35. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading today. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. There's a small chapel called Dominus Flevi that sits just outside the city of Jerusalem across the Kidron Valley on the western slope of the Mount of Olives. The name for it, Dominus Flevi, means the Lord wept. And this name comes from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus laments over the city of Jerusalem twice in the Gospel of Luke. We heard one of those accounts in our reading from the Bible today. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for the final week of his life of teaching and healing and proclaiming the kingdom of God. And Jesus laments. Jesus will lament, weep again on the night he is betrayed and arrested. According to tradition, the Dominus Flevi Chapel sits where Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem for people that had refused to listen to the prophets that had come before and also refused to receive the life-giving ministry, love, and grace of Jesus. I've never been to Palestine and Israel, but I hope to get to travel to the Holy Land someday to see these places that I've learned of from the Bible and from tradition. And I'm always so grateful to hear stories from others who have traveled there. I first learned about this chapel, the Dominus Flevi Chapel, from Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor, one of my favorite preachers and authors, in an article she wrote called, As a Hen Gathers Her Brood. Reverend Taylor describes how inside the Dominus Flevi Chapel, there is a large altar table that sits in front of a high arched window that looks out over the city of Jerusalem. Iron grill work divides the view of the city into sections, much like the lead work of a stained glass window. And on a sunny day, the clear glass window looks a good bit like a stained glass window, except the picture you see isn't made of glass. 
Instead, you see the actual living, moving, growing city of Jerusalem itself all laid out before the window. It's beautiful, as you can see in our picture. Right below the window is the altar table, and on the front piece of the altar, there is a mosaic medallion of a white hen with a golden halo around her head. You can see her there with the red comb looking like a crown on her head, and her wings are spread wide open to shelter the pale yellow chicks that gather up underneath her. It's really quite beautiful, isn't it? And it's a powerful and moving image, the mother hen protecting her chicks, just as Jesus expresses his longing and his lament over Jerusalem. But we know from our Bible that the hopefulness of that scene, that picture, didn't really happen. Though Jesus longed to gather the people under his wings like a mother hen, he was rejected. I think one of the most powerful parts of this mosaic representation that we have is a very truthful representation of Jesus' lament. Surrounding the beautiful mosaic of hen and chicks are Jesus' words in Latin that translate in English, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills prophets and stone those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. This last phrase, and you were not willing, are the words that lie in a pool of red underneath the chick's feet. You were not willing. Lest we think this lament is just for Jerusalem at this moment and at that moment in time, I believe we can surely hear this lament for us today. Jesus knows that we too often are just not willing to receive his love and grace and to follow him in that love and grace in the world. And yet he continues to offer that love and grace to each and every one of us every day, calling us to himself. There's another image of an animal that Jesus uses in our Bible reading today. Besides the mother hen protecting her chicks, there's also a fox running around. That fox, as Jesus calls him, is Herod Antipas, the king approved by Rome who ruled over Palestine. And the fox is threatening to kill Jesus. Religious leaders come and tell Jesus point blank that Herod wants to kill him and that Jesus should definitely get away from Jerusalem and not go there at all. It's interesting then, isn't it, that Jesus would pick the image of a mother hen for himself and ultimately for God. A mother hen up against a fox? There are so many images for God from the Hebrew scriptures, from Jesus' scriptures. And among those images for God, there are some much more powerful animals used in the poetic metaphors used to describe God, like the mighty eagle of Exodus or the stealthy leopard found in the prophet Hosea? Or what about the proud lion of Judah mowing down his enemies with a roar? That lion would be pretty handy when facing down a fox. But Jesus goes another way, as Jesus so very often does. The more we get to know Jesus in the Bible and witness his work in the world, the more we see how Jesus keeps insisting on turning the world order on its head, particularly the way we think, think things ought to be. You know, our perfectly ordered power pyramid way of thinking. But Jesus insists that children, women, poor people, sick people, the broken, the imperfect, the less than, those who just don't measure up, that these are beloved and valued in God's kingdom. While rulers, the wealthy, the powerful, the perfect, need to step aside or even step down and make room. So of course, Jesus chooses a hen, the very opposite image of a fox, to symbolize himself and shows us again how it is that he comes to love and save us and the whole world. Jesus won't be a ravenous lion, a mighty eagle, a warrior, a leopard. What Jesus will be is a mother hen who calls her chicks under her wings, breast exposed in the most vulnerable posture in the world. She has no fangs, no claws, 
no ferocious roar. What she does have is her willingness to shield her little ones with her own body, wings open wide. Again and again, we see that Jesus comes to us in ways that we least expect. Many of the images we tend to use in our songs and prayers and teaching at church and otherwise, they often rely heavily on the idea of Jesus as the conquering king, enthroned in majesty and glory, the Lord of our lives, the only son of the Father. But Jesus shows us something else, something very important and very needed today. Jesus also comes to us as mother hen with a love so powerful that she is willing to give up her life for us protecting, shielding, comforting, calling us into the fold of her love and mercy and grace, even when we refuse to listen or to follow. Jesus may lament our refusal. We hear those words today. But Jesus remains right there, right here with us. And Jesus is right here with us when we discover that so many things in our lives are just out of our control. We may believe that if we just say the right thing or pray the right way or try hard enough or kind enough, can just do enough, then our lives will just go our way. And really, it's all in our ability to control the outcome, isn't it? But so much of life's circumstances are beyond our control others' feelings and actions, an incurable disease, an accident. And when we realize this, I think it can be really hard to make it all compute. And it can lead us to believe that if bad things happen, it is just our fault. Or if bad things happen to other people, it's just their fault. Certainly that can be true. Our decisions and actions lead to consequences for sure. But sometimes we just go too far and believe that simply, if I just do enough, do it right, I can control this situation and the outcome. And if the outcome is bad or tragic, then it's pretty obvious I'm a failure, particularly in my faith and my spirit. So let's just say no to that today. No, right here, right now. Let's let go of that. And instead... Let's let in Jesus' reality of love and grace. Let Jesus walk with us, hold us. Let's accept Jesus' gracious, protecting love, arms wide open, vulnerable, and self-giving. Let's let Jesus be our partner in our unfolding lives, trusting that he is right with us every step of the way. When we are in control, and most definitely when we realize we are not. Amen. Please join us as we sing, Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am. With the events of these past weeks unfolding before our eyes with the war in Ukraine and Russian aggression there, 
It feels like we need a special time of prayer for the people of Ukraine today. So I invite you to join with me right now in that time of prayer. That's adapted from a prayer by Kayla Craig. Please join with me in prayer. Oh God of peace, our hearts are so heavy and we can barely keep up with the breaking news. We don't know what to say or what to do in our world that is so wounded. So we come to you with hearts heavy for the people of Ukraine, for all who sit in the crossfires of violence and acts of war. O oh God of peace, be with the people of Ukraine, with the mothers who carry babies to subway shelters, with the fathers who hold their heads in their hands, with the children who absorb the traumas of violent acts of powerful men. Loving God, we struggle to know the words to pray in this time for a warring world and all who are vulnerable in it. And we don't pretend to know the extent of the damages or what today or tomorrow will bring, but we know that you are a God of peace and that we can't bomb our way to peace. So loving God, we call on you to comfort the crying and heal the hurt. Make us instruments of your peace. Tend the aching and soothe the fearful. Create in us places where rhythms of grace are danced out into your world. That peace may be the final word where evil loses its sting now and forevermore. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, today and every day. Amen. Hello, I'm Ellen Dixon, and I'm part of the Mission Committee and part of Choir here at Douglas Avenue. Let's pray together. Dear God, my best friend, and strong comforter and provider, hi. Thank you for always welcoming me to come and talk with you. Always the gracious host, supplying joy in the middle of hectic, peace in the middle of the storm, and always the gentleman that only comes when invited, all the while preparing the best for me. As the David says in Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, what a table of sufficiency you have prepared and continually refreshed for us. By us, I mean all those who could use a touch from you, like those whose housing is insufficient, those who have physical challenges, those in the thick of war, please show President Putin your table and your love. Help us, dear shepherd, to see ourselves as you see us, as beloved created beings, able and blessed children of you. Help us see the skills we have to augment the lives around us and how to use those skills those school skills that are true gifts given to us for use in our world. Whether that be painting like our Gwen and the employees in the Wibble, or contributing in many of the small groups in this church or other organizations in our town. Psalms 139 says, you are a child of God. You are wonderfully made, dearly loved and precious in his sight. Thank you for all the guidance you give, so fluidly and lavishly. It does our spirits good to look and see your refreshing and nurturing that flows over us. May we breathe in deeply of your spirit, like a breath of fresh air, fresh spring air, to encourage us to bloom like the spring flowers we see popping their heads up now. Your ways are always fresh and new designed specifically for our needs. Thank you. You made us individually and you care for us individually. Such wonder. Now, Father, we worship you as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship this morning. Whether you're online or in the sanctuary, you're part of a growing family of faith that loves God and loves and serves our neighbors. If you'd like to take the next step in putting your faith into action, here are several things you might consider. We have all been shocked and saddened by recent events in Ukraine. The United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR, is on the scene providing humanitarian aid to those who need it most. You can support these activities by using the drop-down menu on our online giving portal or bringing a check to the church with Ukraine in the memo. Right here in our own backyard, food insecurity remains an important problem. We hope you'll take the opportunity this week to help replenish the DAUMC micropantry. It's easy to do. Next time you're at the store, just pick up a non-perishable food item, hygiene item, or cleaning item and drop it off at the micropantry on the west end of the DAUMC campus. We hope you're well aware of the life-changing work being done at Wouldn't It Be Lovely. The next opportunity to support the WIBL Associates is Saturday, March 26th at the next fabulous WIBL Showcase Sale. It begins at 9 a.m. and you will find hundreds of pieces of refinished furniture and home decor items. Let's all support the Associates of Wouldn't It Be Lovely. On Monday, March 28th, DAUMC continues its Vital Conversations on Race. This discussion will be held via Zoom, and you can participate beginning at 6.30 p.m. Contact the church office for links and complete information. And then on Sunday, April 24th, the United Methodist Women will celebrate the art and the generosity of Gwen Lewis. Join them at 11.30 a.m., right here on the DAUMC campus. Of course, none of these ministries would be possible without your dedicated support. We've tried to make it convenient to support the ministries of DAUMC. You can use our online giving portal. Simply scan the QR code on your screen. We also have automatic bill pay using your bank, ACH bank transfer using Douglas Avenue's bank, or you can simply bring a check by the church office. If you're worshiping in person this morning, you'll find handy donation boxes in the front and back of the sanctuary. While you're at it, please take a moment to fill out our online contact form. You'll find a link in the comments section of online worship and a QR code on the front of this morning's bulletin for in-person worship. Now, it's time to return to worship. Please join us as we sing, I am thine, O Lord.
Our Lent series, Good Enough, is based on a book of devotions of the same name by Kate Bowler and Jessica Ritchie. Kate and Jessica offer wonderfully graceful invitations to seek alternatives to the pressures of perfectionism. We hope that you will make reading these daily devotions part of your Lent practice. And this is what the book looks like here, that you will join with one of our small groups for debriefing and deepening your experience through conversation with others. All the information on how to get the book and also to get the devotional, free devotional guide that goes with it, uh, that you can use with the book or separately. All of that information about getting those resources and joining one of our small groups is in the e-newsletter. So we hope that uh, you will read that and join with us uh, in this time. You know, people, life is hard, and we know that. Jesus knows that. God knows that. And it is so helpful and healing when we realize that it is hard for everyone. That awareness, the deep love, and the connection that grows from that makes a difference in people's lives and in our world. Each worship experience during this season of a good enough Lent, we will end with a blessing from the book. And so here is a blessing for when you realize everyone is struggling. Receive this blessing for when you realize everyone is struggling. Blessed are you who see things clearly, where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers. Superpowers of ever-widening empathy and existential courage that get you back up after another fall. And a deepening awe at the beauty and love that can be found amid life's rubble. Like flowers that grow from the cracks in the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you and thank God for you. Blessed are all who struggle, for we are in good company and will never walk alone. Thank you for joining in this time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We pray that this whole experience has been powerful and meaningful, has been uplifting for you, that you will continue to join with us for online worship here on Facebook and YouTube, or join with us for worship in the sanctuary at the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church campus on Sunday mornings at 8.15 and 10.30. I want to remind you that that contact form is there for you and that we hope that you will put some information in there so that we can connect with you, that we can get information to you, help you get started in those small groups to continue to connect and grow in your faith, um, that you will use the prayer request uh, option that is there on that contact form too. We love to pray with you. We long to do that with you. So please put those prayer requests in today. And now as you go into your day, May the God who loves all creation, especially when it's painful and hard, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in just the most surprising ways, go with you and dwell among you and give you joy. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.